always wanted to know what it's like to be a black creative living in London. Well, instead of wondering what it's like, I decided to find out. I have always wanted to tell stories about emerging and established creatives. Here's my first trial. Let's see how this goes. Hey! <laughs> What's good, Aya? It's good to see you. How's it going, my bro? So finally, we are here. We're here. We're here at your space. It's humble indeed. <laughs> My name is Ayoba, I'm a music producer and I was born and raised in Stratford, London. Music started for me in 2011 but I've been doing it quite a while. I had been doing it quite a while before that but from a production perspective I started in 2011. I do what I do because I love it, like I love making music and I don't see myself ever stopping. I would say that living in London as a black creative has made music for me like it's made it easier because there's a lot of like opportunities there's a lot of opportunities and i feel like london is a melting pot of lots of different cultures so it allows you to be influenced positively i would say influenced by every possible genre that's out there and I think that's a big reason why we tend to come out with all these very interesting sounds from the UK. Hmm. Amazing conversation so far. So the quest and the search for knowledge continues on what's it like to be a black creative living in London. Let's see what this next person has for us. Hey, Hello, how are you doing? How you doing? Nice Chef? to see good you. Good to see you friends. too. It's good to see yeah, you too. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Through. All right. Come I... on, go straight through. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. How's it going with you, sir? Yeah, not bad. You know, work, 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 work. Well, I... Nice deco, man. I love what you're doing with the colors. <laughs> I love thank it. You. Really, really love it. Thank you. Okay, so I'm in your zone today. So what's the itinerary for today? What's today say? Um, yeah, so I've you know got to go to the office, mm. um, sort out some business stuff. We obviously had an event on Friday with uh, oh, yeah? the of Greenwich. Oh, um, nice. So obviously had to show off some emails. <laughs> As you can see, my laptop in there. Busy day, yeah. So, yeah. Can I come with you? Are, yeah, yeah. yeah let's, uh, let's that would be really cool. Let's, yeah. let's, let's do it. Urban. Um, this is obviously our headquarters. This is our reception lounge area. Um, we actually built this place from scratch. Like it was an empty shell when we moved in. So we actually had to put all these walls that you see, all the colors, everything. We actually did everything from scratch. So we went down to the, you know, minute detailing yeah. of how the deco would look. So the colors actually that you see yeah. are. Lovely. Our brand colors, which is seen on the logo at the end of the wall. Yeah. Um, so obviously, Tribe Urban Entertainment is a mixture of basically three businesses in one. Oh. Tribe Urban Studios, which is obviously the studio spaces that we have. 
Triburban Radio, which you will see later on upstairs, and Triburban Entertainment, which is meant to house everything to do with entertainment and the back end of entertainment. So we're talking about PR, marketing, all that kind of stuff. Those are the kind of things that we're trying to do here at Triburban. Wow, so this is the HQ, this is where the magic happens. Basically. Look at that, the culture. <laughs> we I are agree. the culture, that's, that's our, that's our slogan. Love it, so show me around, let me see. I'm excited already. <laughs> Tribal One Entertainment, let's yeah, go. Come on, let's go. Um, I'm going to start you off at our music studio. Wow, the lights. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it, love it. Originally, when we moved in here, it was it was slightly different. We had a booth, but a lot of the artists wanted it to be more open plan with just a booth in a corner, oh. um, which is what we've done. So we've had a lot of like artists here. We have like Shabo, Spinal, Gigs, um, Suspect, Nadia Rose, Oxlade, Camido. So These are all black about, creatives, yeah? This is what I'm saying. So like love I said... It. Um, the vision has always been to create a space that would enhance and help black people and minorities that are disadvantaged, especially within the UK, to have access to high quality, um, you know, studios at, at an affordable price. Yeah. But also beyond that, obviously, we create part partnerships with institutions as well, like yeah. University of Greenwich, which you, you wow. may have heard of. Um, and we're... You know, we're five years old in June, um, 2023. So hmm. we've we've actually pushed a lot from where we started. We've taken a lot of risks. The pandemic has been a challenge. I you agree. know, so but yeah, and you're still here. And, and you're we're still, still here. And we're still love here. It, love it, love it, love it. Next up is the chat zone. This is where we usually conduct our interviews when we're interviewing new members of the team. Um, but also, this place is used by other staff members when they want to have like private conversations because it's kind of secluded away from the reception area. True. True. Love it. Love it. Okay. And then I'm going to take you guys upstairs. Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, this this farewell. The colours and the lines was inspired by some of the colours that we had and the lines that we had in the in the previous building when we were in Canary Wolf. Okay. Um, this is our visual studio. Oh. So this is the changing room area, which obviously has vanity lights for you know people that want to do makeup, check out themselves. We also have three cubicles in there that people can use to kind of like, I guess, check themselves check out themselves when they change. Out. Basically like a changing room at your local department store, if that makes sense. Wow. Um, so if you come through, this is the visual studio. This studio is a multi-purpose studio. So we use it for podcasting, um, photography, as you can see, photography lights. Um, so podcasting, photography, videography, and yeah. Love it. Careful. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is this is beautiful. This thank is you. so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Wow. So where where next? And then I'll show you this is this is now only staff area. Um, okay. which is where we have the radio station and the staff room. I'm not sure if I show you the staff room, but you know what? We can't be perfect. <laughs> It looks like a mess at the moment, but this is where all the production and back of house stuff happens. Wow. Um, we've got editing suites, we've yeah. got suites for the radio station. Everything basically goes down this from is, here. This is from the powerhouse. This, this is what this is how it's supposed to be, though. Well, yeah. Who walks in? Everybody's putting it in. <laughs> so I love it, I love it, I love it. Yeah, I love it, love it. Love it. And last but not the least. Okay. We have the radio station. Try our radio. You know the vibes. So this is where we broadcast from. Um, the radio station runs 24-7, but we're we only do live shows from, I guess, 9 in the morning till 11 p.m. in the wow. evening. 
amazing. What do you think? Still the art. It is still the art. I mean, we are, I would say, probably confidently that we're the only black station in the UK that has facilities, radio station wise, anyway, that's at this level. I, I don't wow. know of any other black station wow. in the UK. We're all self funded. And, you know, I had this vision 10 years, well, over 12 years ago when I was in politics and I wanted to achieve everything through politics. But you know how things go with politics. It was all red tapes. So I had to put my money where my mouth is and, you know, myself along with my business partner, um, we've literally been pushing and pushing and pushing the envelope of excellence. Um, and we are here. Yes. We want to be here another 5, 10, 15, 20 more years and build a legacy. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So, impacting life. Watch this space. Love it. I'm, I'm here for it, man. Here for all of it. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah, my name is Michael Bullion. Um, I've been in the UK now for about 25 years. Been here since the 98s. And when I came into the country, I came in as a 15 year old boy from Africa, um, which, my, you know, I'd lived in South Africa previously three years with my family. So we came here to basically try and get some of that British dream. Um, so when I came here, I had, I had no idea or inclination of where I was trying to go, where I was going. Um, as a creative, I, I was into art, but it, it wasn't anything that I thought I'd aspire to as, as a young person, anything to do with art, if that makes sense. I grew up around my uncle who was a you know, designer and then evolved to becoming a graphic designer. My dad, was a quantity surveyor and one of my uncles was an engineer so i had those kind of levels of aspirations um for me but obviously having studied here in london um i then went to college in essex and then i went to university in greenwich university of greenwich in london um and that was pretty much my educational life circle journey um and I guess things really only start to form in terms of vision for me anyway, when I was kind of like in uni, I started thinking about what direction I want to take my life and stuff like that. Tribe Urban is a company that I established five years ago. Um, it started in June 2018. And I remember when we started, um, one of the first things that I was very big on was basically creating a corporate governance for the organization because for me, there needed to be rules or regulations set within the business of how we were planning to operate. Um, I find that a lot of black companies tend to not do that. And often when challenges or issues or problems come up, it's almost like they are trying to battle it. Initially we started in Canary Wolf and then we moved into this facility um, in 2020, just before the pandemic. So you can imagine how crazy that experience would have been. When we moved in here, this place was an empty shell. And, you know, we had to source out architects, builders and all that kind of stuff. And building through the pandemic in itself was a very, very big challenge. However, um, one thing has always been vivid when it comes to tribe urban the brand, what it stands for, what its purpose is within the black minority community has always been something that we've aspired to champion. One of the things that was clear for me was, you know, having a vision like this 12 years ago where I was in politics and I wanted to achieve this through politics. Um, and then I then got dismayed by achieving it in politics because there was so much red tape. So I had to step away and, you know, obviously having met new friends along the road, um, saved some money together and 
we started what is now something that is beginning to have a tangible space in the media and entertainment space in the UK. Living as a black man in London, I will say that it's helped my creative journey. Um, but the reality is hindsight is a beautiful thing because you never know what it'd be like elsewhere. You only know what the, you only know the reality that you're actually living, if that makes sense. So for me, I've I've always felt like the UK I wouldn't say necessarily supported my growth within the industry, but I think the continuous desire to want to do things differently and want to be a force for change um, has always been the underpinning driving force for me within the UK industry. Well, when it comes to entertainment media um, industry, I remember um, when I graduated from University of Greenwich, I actually studied estate management. And when I graduated, I went for about 18 months looking for a job, having been a graduate. And it was very, very shocking for me that in those 18 months, I could not find a job within property, anything to do with property, managing estates, anything that I couldn't find a job. Um, and I got frustrated after a while. So my aunt in Australia said, oh, why don't you come to Australia? It's booming, you know, economically is doing well. So I packed my bag, phew, fly off to Australia. And I'm in Australia for about 11 months. I got all my certificates for mining, but guess what? There was just one day I was told to do something, just one day. Um, I was basically working on a construction site. So the guy, the team lead asked me to go clear some like land to the side. So I've gone over there now and I'm just trying to check the terrain before I move the truck over. And I just see like a snake <laughs> going past and I'm like, yo, that's it, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> those 18 months where I struggled to find a job, I actually became a self-taught graphic designer and video editor. And sometimes I'll do jobs as a freelancer via the internet, just sending back and forth. So when I was living in Australia, even though the time difference was like eight, nine hours, I was always kind of like living on UK time in, the, in, in Australia, if that makes sense, just to be able to keep in touch with clients. And when I came back from Australia, I remember like maybe maybe about four months in, um, I used to work with a guy who, um, along with some other friends, came up with one of the biggest Afrobeats concerts at the time called Africa Unplugged. And for me, um, you know, they all sold to me a big groundbreaking and, and at that point in time, this was in 2012, no one was doing anything like that. Um, and guess what? It was going to be done at the Wembley Arena. So as black people within the culture, we'd always struggle to get uh, venues. And that was the first time, as far as I can remember, that especially black Africans were given like a big venue to, to have an event. So I did all the flyers, all the marketing, everything, the website, um, even the production on the day. In, in, in the arena. And I think that whole project took me about three, four months. But guess what? I had gone from someone that had been very hopeless to someone that literally made about 12 grand in the space of three months. Uh, um, and I think when that happened was when the pin dropped for me that look, like there is money in this, but if you can find a way to kind of like niche and continuously evolve yourself and your skills and your talent, and I guess from there, the, the rest is history, because if I had to sit here and tell you the full story, it would be here forever.
So yes, we're still out here. Black creatives are still winning and I'm down to my final interview. Have you ever wondered what it's like to have two black creatives living in the same house? Magic, right? Let's find out from Timmy and Demi, two female black creatives that are winning. Come with me. Hey, Timmy. Hey, how, are how you doing? Good, it's good to see you. It's good to you see too. you. All right, so where's your crew? We're upstairs. We are upstairs, yeah. the both of you, right? Yeah. All right, let's do this. It's been a long day, don't worry. We've been at out and about on these streets trying to look for black creatives that are winning. <laughs> we found a couple of them. <laughs> yes, you love it. Sun's, sun's out. These, these are days you prayed for, right? Right, exactly. We've been waiting a long time. So, come in. Welcome. I'm going to go straight through. Ah, oh, serious business. Okay, it's going still. Hi, Demi. Hi, hi, how you doing? How are you? It's good to see you. I'm so yeah. sorry. We had some few stops here and yeah. there and, and everything was happening. Once upon a time, on a Monday in 2016, I didn't mind that tomorrow was Monday. And I was living full time, but now I'm living part time instead. I don't mean the rest of the time I'm dead, it's just. Every time I leave the front door, I want to go back to my bed. I want to hear thoughts unsaid. I want to leave people on red and I want to be somewhere else instead. And sometimes I just want some. My name is Temi T. I am a spoken word artist, creative writer and performance poet. And I was born in South East London. My name is Demi Muniz. I am a fashion designer and I was born in South East London. Altogether, uh, it's been about four years. I first started writing when I was about 16 and then I didn't really do anything with it. And around 2017, I was in Birmingham and I saw a performance that was kind of like, it reminded me of a spoken word performance and I looked back to the stuff that I'd been writing and I thought, I want to try that. So went to an open mic in 2017, tried it out, loved it and Performed a couple more times since then and then moved back to Birmingham, moved back from Birmingham to London and I started performing in London again in 2021. So consistently, I'd say just under two years. Um, I started sewing about 10 years ago for myself um, and then I started sewing for other people about five years ago, maybe six and I launched my business in 2020, which was three years ago. I do what I do because it is healing. It's part of my healing journey. It's part of my story and kind of how I'm able to process my experiences. A lot of what I do is self-reflective, um, drawn on life experiences and a lot of the traumas. I believe like pain creates the most beautiful art. So that's really where it comes from. So it's healing for me. And whenever I perform, it's not just an experience for me. It's an experience with everyone in the audience is an energy exchange it's healing for other people so um i do it for healing i do what i do because i feel like there is a gap in the market for custom fit clothes um pieces that just make that just fit your body perfectly and make you feel like you've invested in something that is just yours no one has it it's a special piece to you and it makes you feel sexy, confident, and it's flattering and practical at the same time. For me, living in London as a black woman is personally aided my journey. That's part of my identity and my writing is about my identity and authenticity, so that's where it comes from. I understand that in the creative industry, there is colorism that does exist. Um, whether I've personally experienced it or even paid attention to it, I would say no. I kind of just focus on what it is that makes me me and being a black woman is my identity for writing, it's my driving force behind writing, so it, it aids me in that way. Living in London as a black woman has, I think I would say that it sparked my creative journey because being around people that do what I do and seeing how the community just embraces them and ever since COVID specifically, it feels like there's a there's a lot bigger of a platform 
for small boutique black owned brands to thrive. So I think being surrounded by people that have found success in this career path and um, have just been so loved and welcomed by the community and have built a real family around their businesses. That's really encouraged me to make me feel like I can do the same thing. And there are definitely people out there that are looking for what I'm giving. So I think it's really helped my journey so far. Uh, my biggest win as a black creative, I would say, was um, building my first music studio that I built in Tottenham. That was a big accomplishment for me. Uh, it made me feel like accomplished, like it was something that I'd always dreamed about doing from when I had the studio in my parents' house. So, yeah, being able to finally build one and start an actual business was a big win for me. To date, my biggest win as a black creative is just about eight months into performing in London and actually posting content online. I was approached by a producer, Lamuse RT. She's worth, worked with Femi Kuti and we actually did some work together. Um, we're drawn on kind of speaking Yoruba culture and things like that. And it really put me outside of my comfort zone. But so early in my creative career, being able to work with a producer on that level was a massive win. My biggest win as a black creative, I think just being, like I was saying, like just being embraced and working with people in fashion, not just in fashion, but also outside of fashion that have collaborated with me has made me like just reaffirm the fact that what I'm doing is needed, it's sought after. Um, so I think being able to collaborate with small scale brands, stylists that are coming up, artists that are working on their first music video. Um, yeah, just the collaboration and the partnerships that I've been able to, and those relationships that I've been able to develop since first starting out. That's, yeah, that's been a really big win. Inclusion, so, it's a very interesting question you asked there because um, part of the things I did when I came back from Australia was I became chair of trust, which is um, which was at the time the biggest uh, voluntary sector organisation that dealt with black and minority related issues in in Essex, um, and I was the chair of that organisation. I had about four councillors on the on the board as well as eight other community members. Um, and one of the things I really learned was that equality and inclusion is not the same with everyone else, but organizations have to apply a rule of thumb that makes it, that makes everything equal. So what I mean by that is, my understanding of inclusion prior to that role was very biased towards, I guess, the black agenda. Does that make sense? But in that role, I actually realized that you don't have to be black to not feel included and stuff. You could be disabled. You could have, you could have certain disabilities. You can have, you could even be of a, of a slightly different race to, that people are used to, does that make sense, for you to not feel include, included within an organisation. Inclusivity for me, which is one thing we're big on at Tribe Urban, is basically opening the doors to everyone and anyone and giving them an opportunity to actually get out of the company or the space what they envision they want to get out of it but the most important th things to make this achievable is value respect and i guess i'll say um similar similar um 
viewpoints, if that makes sense. So I don't know if, you, if you've if you worked at any organization, you've been at any organization within the UK, but one of the things that they often say is that there is a working culture within this environment. And I think inclusivity is about, for me really, is about people just having good morals and fitting into the working culture within whatever environment they find themselves. So, um, yeah. As a creative, inclusion to me means making space for all types of art. There's always something that's new and it's not always understood to begin with. For instance, me doing spoken word and blending that with music, having come into the community, I found that there isn't really a cemented place that spoken word really has in the mainstream. So it's being open to that, it's creating the spaces for that and part of that is collaboration as well. Collaborating with new artists, new sounds um, in different ways that you can. So being open and having that space for, for new sounds and new, new arts. Inclusion for me as a black creative means um, having a spotlight on what we do and not just, you know, not just a limited spotlight because I feel like we often get marginalized into specific genres and things like that but the reality is the black creatives creating all sorts of things so that's why I would say inclusion for me would be. Um, inclusion means building a space where different creatives across different industries and creative sectors can feel like they can express themselves through their talent no matter what their scale is whether they're trying to become a global brand or whether they're a boutique label or a painter whatever it is if just building an inclusive space means that different creatives can have that platform and feel like they can work together and just express themselves to their respective communities so that's what building an inclusive space means to me. I think the black community is, black creatives are well represented in London to a certain extent because looking at how far we've come just as a community, we have a lot more platforms where we can express ourselves um, even looking at media outlets, like the way they're, in, they're embracing and working with black creatives, it feels like we definitely are a lot more present and a lot more seen in the industry, but um, of course it's all part of a journey. So I think ultimately we're not quite where we want to be, but we're making huge progress at the same time. Personally, I don't think that the black community is represented well enough in the, in the UK, in London. And the reason I say that is because I do feel like for the most part, we do get marginalized. Um, specific genres are pushed and specific stereotypes when in reality, we're much more diverse than drill, for example. Um, I don't want to single out the drill community, but like, I feel like black women in our community get hypersexualized, and black men are sort of only promoted if they're promoting a specific type of lifestyle. R&B music, for example, there's so many. It's so like multifaceted, but it's almost like you have to go to America if you want to get any sort of any sort of traction. From Black Creatives, I think what I'd like to see more is more collaboration. Um, not just within your place in the industry, so in terms of musicians with, mu musicians, with musicians, um, I'm talking musicians with stylists, with creating new projects, videographers and actually having, you know, a community that goes throughout different types of arts. Um, and one thing that I really want to be able to do is create a, a spoken word music festival that doesn't exist yet in the mainstream and that would be crazy. So 
collaborating with other black creatives and just creating something big like we are art. We set the standard, we set the tone for everything that kind of is trending and, and becomes big. So yeah, just staying close, grassroots. What I'd love to see more from my fellow black creatives is um, more unity in the scene. I feel like it can be quite clicky um, and the UK is hard enough already in terms of how many of us there are actually here within the scene. Like, um, yeah, I'd like to see more camaraderie and unity. That's pretty much it. What I'd love to see um, from black creators in the UK beyond collaboration, which I think is extremely important, is I think there are two things. I think one is unity. Collaboration can happen without unity, but unity cannot happen without collaboration. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I feel like a lot of black people in the UK are very clicky. Um, they can be very divided and they can also go against one another in terms of growth. Um, you know, sometimes I get people say, oh, don't go to Tribe Urban Studios because we don't know the people there. I'm like, it doesn't really make a difference to me. I, I have to play my part in rising above those nuances, if you get what I'm trying to say. Um, unity is a big thing. And I think sharing resources is also very important. I have a lot of friends in the States and my God, like if I call someone in the States and say to them, oh, I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z, do you know anyone? If that person knows someone, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I will put you in touch. Help. Like They're ready to give you the number straight away. They're ready to connect you straight away. In the UK, hmm, was, it, was my man trying to do like, was, do you get what I'm saying? Like, what's his angle? Let me understand it. Like, you don't really have to understand everyone's angle because just because you have accessibility today doesn't mean you're gonna have it tomorrow. And just because you're big today doesn't mean you're going to be big tomorrow. And one thing I've always been conscious of, of letting people around me know is the biggest thing anyone can ever do to, the biggest disservice or disjustice any black person can do to other black people or even minority ethnic people is underestimate the other person. Because you just, you actually just don't know where anyone is going to end up in life. And that's just the reality. And I think if everyone were a bit more humble, I think the UK black minority entertainment scene would, would be massive. You think about it like, we don't, we don't have any mainstream media outlets. We don't. But yet... Yeah, we are the center of focus when it comes to media entertainment growth in the UK. Any reason why? Anyone answer that question? So yeah, that that's what I would like to see more in the UK. What I would love to see more from black creatives is um, more partnerships, more collaborations, more bigger, maybe more like bigger and more established brands and artists working with smaller up and coming artists and creatives and boutique labels that are looking for the platform, I guess, to really show their work. So collaboration on a bigger scale, not just up and coming creatives working together, but also the more established creatives working with the rising talent and also just more black owned media platforms that really champion black work and black art for example Grap Gala like that was just an iconic moment in black in like black British history so more moments like that I think would be epic and I think it's, it's en route so it's an exciting time wow what a day so my quest has finally come to an end You've heard their stories, you've seen the range in the conversations they've had, you've seen how they've been able to create impact and how they've been able to do their best as black creatives. For me, winning is very subjective. Whether you're on the high or on the low, it's up to you. 
to know whether you're winning or not. I had fun. I hope you did too. See you in the next one. Remember, Black Creative are still winning. Hi, I'm Michael Bullion. I'm a Black Creative and I'm winning. My name is Demi Muniz. I'm a Black Creative and I am winning. My name is Timmy T. I'm a Black Creative and I am winning. My name is Ayoba. I'm a Black Creative and I'm winning. My name is TJ Amin. I'm a Black Creative and I'm winning. Their stories and wins are very unique. Big or small, they are all wins. And to the aspiring black creatives watching this, your dreams are valid. Go out there and win.